Hello everybody and welcome to this macroeconomic video on inflation. So firstly in the top left, what is inflation? Well inflation is defined as a sustained rise in prices. So when there is a rise in the price of goods, inflation occurs because inflation is a rise in price. And when inflation occurs, the value of money decreases and that point is just said there. Shows how the value of money has decreased since the same point last year. And I'll use an example to explain this. So if the price of a Freddo is 20p and I have a pound, I can buy five Freddos. However, if the price of a Freddo goes up to 25p, so inflation has occurred because prices have risen, then now with my pound I can only buy four Freddos. So therefore the value of my pound has decreased, the value of my money has decreased, because I can't buy as many Freddos with it its purchasing power has decreased. And inflation can be drawn diagrammatically. Now these diagrams may not make sense to you if you haven't already covered aggregate demand and aggregate supply. But after you've watched those videos, this will all make sense. And adv I'd advise you watch those videos also. So, if there is an increase in aggregate demand, our curve shifts right from AD1 to AD2. And because of this, our equilibrium price increases from P1 to P2. So as there has been an increase in price, inflation has occurred because inflation is a sustained rise in price. And this is the same idea if aggregate supply decreases. If our short run aggregate supply curve decreases, so our curve shifts upwards from SRAS1 to SRAS2, then the price level has increased from P1 to P2, so therefore inflation has occurred because inflation is a sustained rise in price and the price has increased. And you just need to know a couple more things about inflation before we carry on. So an inflation can either be anticipated or unanticipated, so expected inflation and unexpected inflation. And we can also get deflation, and deflation is the opposite of inflation. So there is a sustained fall in prices, so therefore the value of money increases because I can now buy, buy more for that money. So the opposite way round with the Freddo example. Now how do we measure inflation? Well inflation is measured using a series of indexes. And we have the RPI, the CPI, the RPIX and the RPIY. RPI stands for Retail Price Index and CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. And then we have RPIX and RPIY. And what they do is each of these indexes, they will have a basket of goods. And by basket of goods, I mean things that people regularly buy. So things like bread, things such as mobile phone contracts, things such as mobile phones. All those kind of things that people buy on a regular basis will be in this basket. And what these indexes do is, people will look at the prices of all these different goods up and down the country. So say for example bread, they will look at the price of bread at every single place up and down the country. And they will then work out an average for the price of bread. Then what they will do is they will compare this average price of bread to the average price of bread at the same time last year. And they will then work out the percentage change between those two numbers. So the percentage change between the average price of bread this year and the average price of bread last year. And this percentage change is now becomes our inflation rate and it shows how much, how much prices have increased, so therefore how much inflation has occurred. And there's a few differences between the few the different indexes. So the CPI or the Consumer Price Index does not take into account household payments, for example mortgages and paying the rent. However, the RPI, the Retail Price Index, does take these things into account. However, the RPI, Retail Price Index, ignores the top four percent of households, because if you are in the richest top four percent of the people in the country you won't be affected by inflation because you can still buy the goods no matter what, even if their price does increase slightly. Now the RPIX and the RPIY, what are they? Well the RPIX is the value of the RPI minus mortgage payments. So the RPI does include mortgage payments, but the RPIX doesn't. And the RPIY doesn't include mortgage payments, but it also doesn't take into account indirect taxes. So taxes on consumption, so things like VAT.